Thank you for the invitation. Thank you, Nessa. Hello, others, uh, guests. Um, <clears throat> I will speak as some very narrow area of law, which mainly there is a U section of law, which is very, it's very close, harmonized to national section of law in competition field. I already talked about this in uh, December, and uh, mainly this presentation will, co will cover the same issues that uh, will be, was raised and challenges was raised in the December presentation, and um, but with some exemptions covering also some latest cases that was uh, taken by other one of us. Uh, Competition authority, other was data protection and consumer protection authorities, and also about the challenges and possible remedies in, in digital markets. Yes, starting with um, big data and platforms, um, what is a big data? Yes, and uh, as we understand, we usually we uh, talk about publicly available data, these are data that everyone's made the public and also the government made the public in aggregate way, in aggregate form. And this data usually can be assessed by everyone and used by everyone. Of course, there is a, one other part of data that people are usually giving against uh, to uh, exchange of certain service, to receive certain service in a exchange. And these are usually data which we are giving to became, becoming the users of platforms uh, of different services. And this is usually also closed data and this is mainly this data is what will be covered by this presentation. Uh, talking about platforms, uh, there is mainly from competition uh, assessment, uh, there is two sides of the platforms. We analyze, uh, there is service-based platforms. These platforms, if we talk about platforms in general, we all, all understand Facebook and, the, and Google, but in these cases, service-based platforms are platforms which connects uh, consumers, businesses, with uh, service providers, which are ride-sharing platforms, booking platforms. Uh, mainly if we are talking about uh, service platforms where usually are a little bit different mar market structure, we used to talk about, if we talk about uh, Facebook and Google, the usually, of course, there is, usually these are already services that are already offered before these platforms came to, the market offered by the individual service providers, by hotels, uh, by taxi service providers, other service providers. These platforms are only aggregated the services they are providing. But anyway, this leads to certain and some concentration in the market. It depends on the market, it depends on a different service that are provided. It could be duopoly, usually that are is we have an example mentioned that uh, in right sharing market in Latvia there is two platforms. It could be regarded as duopoly competition. In s other markets, these are also national more. As, uh, in uh, booking platform markets, there are more variety and, and, and globally there is more uh, offers from these platforms. And yes, there is still competition in the market, potential for new entrants who can, who are willing to aggregate, who can offer maybe uh, new services for uh, users uh, to not only the booking services or riding services, but as add-on services that could be a, a, for a value for the user. And in this case, these, uh, platforms could come in the market. Also, you can come in the market with uh, the same platform offering the same taxi service. Talking about subsidy-based platforms, yes, there is usually what is the actual market situation in these markets. 
these are when their Facebook is acting, Google is acting, so social network platforms, uh, also search platforms, uh, where mostly we, we see the dominance of one of the platforms. This dominance is usually, of course, not was, not became, come in once as a, but it was a result of the competition. So what we can call, um, I can call this as a competition for the market. If I can mention examples, it was, for example, drug MLV, it was dogm.lv, which was 10 years, maybe very popular, national social network, but then Facebook become more and more popular. People were using for some time both social platforms, but due to the network effects using that most of the connected people, friends, uh, relatives were switching to the other platform, this resulted in the situation that we see now that there is, for example, in Facebook is a social private network market, there is only Facebook is a dominant platform. Of course, it differs in different markets, mainly in Asia there is different uh, supply side competition, but anyway, in Europe and, and other parts, the Western part, uh, we see that Facebook is a main service provider in this platform market. Of course, we, there is enormous barriers to entry. I can't imagine that new platforms could come in the market with the same service as Facebook. You can come in the market maybe only offering something new, something add-on, and substantially new. And due to this uh, also, due to the situation that most of the users are connected and locked in these platforms because other users also in the platform, uh, there is low possibility that some individually will exit the platform, choose another service provider, and in this case, how to say it, switch to this another service. That means usually the switching uh, possibilities are really low and scarce. Uh, about further developments, I don't know. I, I'm not a IT specialist, also I, I, it's hard to predict. But anyway, if we are talking about uh, economy of scale, usually these new technology developments, mainly if there is no radical developments, will come from the, these service providers, usually, because they have resources, they have ability, and Technologies that is mentioned here, machine learning, artificial intelligence is already used by them, which only creates a higher barrier for the entry for other competitors and also for the consumers, users to switch to another platform. Talking about um, enforcement issues, usually what is mentioned is a marketing definition that is a problem. To looking on the cases uh, what was already investigated and there was a decision to take it in these markets, not in Latvia, but by the commission by the other competition authorities. Of course, multi-sided markets create some problems for definition, but it's already is recognized that due to the fact that although there is zero price service, the consumer do, do not pay for the service. The practice it is always recognized that you receive a certain service in exchange. And this situation is uh, an equal to the situation you are paying for a certain service. Also, your data is used to monetize, to, to commercially monetize this and given to advertisers uh, to, how to say, to, to cover the expenses of this platform. And, but from the market definition side, I don't see any problems. Looking on Google case, Google shopping case, the marketing definition was, of course, the rule is very traditional. There's supply side market definition when you analyze the user's behavior, user services, what is used, what are possible services user can switch. 
on to other services. And in this case, this analysis from the analyst point of view uh, was not something like differs from the classical market analysis done by the competition authorities. Also, the, the, that's the fact, that, as I mentioned, the zero price is not a problem for the definition of the service and definition of the market according to competition law. Of course, in some cases, service-based platforms, markets, uh, could be defined as one market because you receive a service from a service provider and the uh, first intermediate or social pla uh, this platform is only uh, the intermediate, in this aggregator of this service. Of course, switching barriers that is usually it is common for these digital markets. Uh, about the market power, market shares, it's still, it's not the uh, first what is analyzed, but usually that is analyzed. Of course, in digital markets, uh, again, I mentioned this Google Shopping case, the commission analyzed how many users are uh, using these search services. Of course, the methods to analyze this are a little bit different, uh, but, but you take, you, the methodology does not differ from the market power and market share analysis in other cases, to my mind. Of course, in the, as I mentioned, the data that is usually essential input, especially in case of social platforms, that also usually are impossible for other competitors to collect uh, the same data from the same uh, persons in parallel and that means that these to enter the market competitors need to some access for the, this input. Different forms of misconduct uh, there is also no big differences in uh, abuse cases I as I think so uh, there is exclusionary abuses, which is Google shopping case, when um, Google as a general search provider, providing the service of general search, uh, introduced a strategy that excluded uh, market participants' undertakings that are offering this compa price comparing service for the users for the users of the search service and the strategy was mainly aimed to prioritize google search comparative service and to downgrade the searches of other uh, services platforms who provided the information aggregation of different products of different prices and comparing these prices. And in this situation, there is this strategy. Of course, this was a digital market. Uh, there is analysis different, but this strategy was not different that you as a competitor uh, exclude uh, other potential entrants or already acting in the uh, downstream market uh, from the market. Of course, more problems, maybe, to my mind, is to with exclusive algorithmic behavior. This, uh, this are, as we know, cartels are uh, behavior, but when two undertakings or more uh, agree on prices, agree on business terms, how will supply to goods to the customers, to the other businesses. And this situation, there is the identical picture, but that this all is done by the uh, digitally, by the algorithm invented. I can mention a certain ex examples of cases. Uh, the one I found was uh, DOG case, it was criminal charge against uh, several uh, private persons, managers of the companies which uh, created an algorithm 
to collude on prices of the posters in Amazon Marketplace. This was an algorithm which collected the information was actual uh, prices that were exhibited and also created some strategies that were united between competitors in the market. In, from the competition law side, there is, got to say, no problem to apply. I think if, if there is maybe to prove this use of algorithm, it could be the challenge for competition authorities. It depends on, of, of course, IT uh, resources, but the concept to prove this does not differ, to my mind, in the uh, cases when we use to investigate certain kind of behavior exchange uh, information by emails, by phones. Uh, as problematic to prove is mentioned other situation when, uh, yes, there is algorithm used, but company only bought an algorithm that's doing something we don't know as a company management, and the situation algorithm is acting independently. There could be such situations, explanations from the company side. Of course, it is a question, does authority accept these or there is something behind, there is something to, to, to analyze. Uh, in this situation, to my mind, of course, it could be a problem to prove individual liability of the persons. It's mainly in cases or in jurisdictions where when there is criminal charges or administrative procedures against the individuals, you are obliged to prove the guilt of certain individual and engagement. The situations where there could be a problem to prove. But anyway, I don't see problems to, if you apply the concept of um, actually applied by the EU and also by Latin Competition Authority that undertaking is liable in any way to force the actions for any employee uh, working as undertaking. It doesn't matter that is this uh, employer in this didn't inform the management, management didn't know about this big certain exchange of information between comp competing undertakings. For example, it was a person who are um, responsible for procurements and, and this person exchanged information with this other company who, will, who participated in procurements in a situation. Anyway, company is liable and due to the fact that the company why this concept is applied in such a way is the company's best place to, to organize risk management, to, do, to deter also such um, infringements from the company side. And that motivates the companies to, to also to engage in risk management and also it contributes to the deterrence of the, such infringements. And in cases, maybe, if such could be in the future, that when algorithms set the prices, to my mind, company as a legal person should be also liable on the same basis because you are liable, you are acting on the market, you usually you are, I could say, not acting independently, managing undertaking independently from the strategies used in the market, also the pricing strategies. And you can't prove that, yes, the algorithm did the pricing, I didn't. You are obliged to follow this as a company management, company owners, it depends, it doesn't matter, the company should have to manage this. <clears throat> it's about merger review thresholds. Uh, yes, it's a problem because not all uh, digital mergers uh, corresponds to usually used turnover threshold. Usually, new new acquired 
new innovative uh, companies who are maybe invented some product uh, but are in for the interest of the Google, Facebook, uh, the, their turnover is very low. Usually it's, and to mitigate this in some countries of EU, the, they introduce this measure threshold that are based on the value of the deal because mostly value of the deal in these situations are very high. Yes, coordinating risks in algorithmic markets. In some mergers, maybe in the, there is analysts in the digital markets where there could be some changes in concepts how coordinating risk, that is coordinating and unilateral risks analyzed in mergers, usually how these coordinating risks in algorithmic markets are analyzed. Also, yes, uh, as I mentioned, these killer acquisitions are acquisitions when uh, platform, any company which owns, have a huge market power, uh, acquires uh, smaller businesses, but very important, very valuable, maybe for the, due to the inventions. Going to the certain cases, yes, about the issues, possible cross competences. I found three cases to, 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 to compare. Uh, these are three cases. One is a competition case, abuse of dominance, investigated by German competition authority, and another is an Italian case investigated by the Italian Competition and Consumer Authority. And the third is a Google case investigated by the French data regulator. This is a, like a comparison um, of the cases you can look at, you can analyze, but it's interesting that in, there is different disciplines of law applied, but mainly the same actions of the, these platforms are analyzed. And in Facebook case, that was as infringement found by the Bundeskartell and was uh, that Facebook um, of course, the Facebook asks the consent of the users when they register in the Facebook, but anyway, this consent covers all. This consent covers all information Facebook are collecting for the Facebook and used for the advertising in the Facebook. Also, it covers information. The person, the same person, are logging in in the WhatsApp, Instagram, other apps and, and, and services where Facebook tools are embedded. And Bundeskartellam found that this, like a, a, I would say tying of two consents is um, disproportionate and this uh, abuses of uh, consumer rights. It is interesting that Bundeskartellam analyzed also the principles defined in the Data protection law in GDPR. That uh, is how how does um, Facebook the volume of data Facebook gathered is it proportional or not? Uh, does the consent really, although you are clicking, all are clicking in the register on such services, is it voluntary at all? Because mostly. Yes, the person, individuals do not read at this constant. But anyway, it's for the, also the, what was analyzed, uh, interesting that was mentioned you, in defining the market power, analyzing the market power, there was mentioned uh, federal justice court practice in, uh, in a civil courts, in civil proceedings, where court found that also the dominant or Companies who have a market power uh, have obligation also to respect the autonomy of the other party. To, that means not to do, deprive a, from the autonomy. That means you you have to some possibilities to deal, especially if the other party is dominant. And in Facebook case, persons usually nobody was maybe caring about this, but. Uh, in this situation, uh, yes. 
and yes, in, in, in Italy case, uh, the same inf the same behavior of Facebook was analyzed as, as misleading information and aggressive commercial practice. What is different in a competition case, the German Bundeskartell didn't apply the fines. They applied only uh, obligations to stop infringement or to change the behavior. And Italy Competition Authority applied the fines in uh, this consumer law breach proceedings. And also the French Competition, uh, not competition, but Data Protection Authority also analyzed the same, generally the same actions of the Google which failed to provide transport easily access to information and uh, there was also the question about what is analyzed about consent given and also applied the fines. It's interesting, different cases uh, uh, in different fields but covers the same uh, actions of these platforms, same kind of actions I can say. And this situation, to my mind, If you talk about these markets in general, these are very these are high barriers. And in this situation, in, in consumer law, data protection law cases, these concepts should apply to all, also for new entrants. In dominance cases, it should be applied, it should be applied only to the cases where undertaking dominant. To my mind, it's better to apply, especially if this to also, it is corresponds to the concepts of the dominance when you, as a dominant undertaking, have a, 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 a obligation to uh, apply higher standards, uh, communicating, communicating and dealing with your clients. Yes, and finally, there is shortly. This is a. The information from uh, Commission policy report, uh, which was conducted by the Commission free experts, and these are three remedies that they offered as a remedies that could be also applied in, on legislative basis, also applied in individual cases, in abuse cases. Uh, what is interesting that also, there is some cross, uh, not competences, but cross application maybe with uh, data protection law, but already data protection law, uh, data protection regulation uh, sets the standards of privacy, setting the standards of privacy, or sets also the standards, how user can act with this information. From competition law side, this information is also regarded as a, as a service and yes there is possibility of data sharing and pooling that is very competitive uh, thing that enables the fire pro competitive not issues but there is possibilities to firms to develop new products if they share and pool the data but also there is collusion risks the multi-homing usually it's not possible in the platforms which are like facebook and amazon uh, like Google and the situation's person can only uh, use this right in data regulation that is already set and uh, this recommendation and report mainly recommends to assess yes to, to, to how to to give a right not to give the rights but to enhance uh, use of the rights of the privacy in such case private parties in such cases uh, this report in, um, encouraged to analyze also such aspects as data portability and data in interoperability interoperability largely it is the same mainly portability is yes is is, is regulated by gdpr and interoperability interoperability of data it's um, Yes, in the situation that platforms is as a dominant is obliged to open to offer like a open code. I'm not IT specialist, but anyway, it could be managed in a, also in such a way. Yes, thank you.
here is uh, sources and literature you can use.